Welcome back, this is part 4 of our Cloud Variable tutorial series. In this one we're going to be covering the components which allow you to read and write the Cloud Variables. These are much like the Logix nodes, and so just to help us out, I've got the uh, right Cloud Variable set up from the previous video set up to the right of me. I'll give you a quick refresher on that one, a quick refresher on values, and then we'll get right into it. So first of all, quick refresher on values, there is a variable definition and then each user has a value under that definition. So again here, favorite fruit with each user having their own independent value. This is important to note, especially with the components, as uh, what users might see in the world can become um, different, differentiated, uh, depending on the setup. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. So to the right here, what we have is um, the standard uh, right cloud variable setup from our previous video. All it does is it writes um, my value u dash probable prime to the u dash probable prime testing dot color. And again, we're writing that value, which I said I wouldn't change. I am changing it, but I'm not changing the g dash nearest value. We won't be using that one in this video. So to the left of it here, I have a uh, material orb, which is a color, which is exactly that color. To prove this, if I go ahead and change it, you'll see it then changes. Let's see how this is set up. This is using one of the components. I did want to show an example of what's going on here though, which is that the components are um, usually synchronizing. Um, there are some limits to the synchronization. Um, there is uh, some delay between um, multiple worlds. Uh, the delay is fairly instantaneous though, if you are in that world. So for example here, if I have this ball in a different world and uh, I write the value from another world that I'm in, it would update instantaneously and that's because I'm in both worlds. Um, but if the world was owned by another user or maybe another uh, computer or it wasn't loaded, then there may be just some delay in updating those. So do keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and reset up this material orb from scratch and then we'll show you some applications of using the components to uh, read that value. Let's go ahead and create that material orb. So I'm gonna go ahead to select my uh, developer tooltip here, go to create new, materials, unlit, unlit, and here's the unlit material. I'm gonna go ahead and close this window because we're using the inspector variant of it. So I'm gonna aim the uh, developer tooltip at my unlit material, hit secondary, open inspector, and here we are in the um, inspector for this material. As it is right now, I can go ahead and change the color and you'll see that the ball changes. And that's what we're after. We just want a ball that has the current value of that variable. So to do this, we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of this. We're going to go to attach component. And now all of the cloud variable components are in this folder at the top here called cloud and then variables, and they're all here. We will be covering um, as many as I can today. Um, some I haven't actually found a use for yet, um, but I will be covering them as best as I can. So we're gonna start with cloud value variable driver. Cloud value variable driver is very similar to dynamic variable driver in that it takes a uh, variable um, configuration and it drives another field with the value of that variable. Let's go ahead and create this one first. I do recommend this one a lot because it's, it's nice and simple. So we're going to go ahead and create it. cloud value variable driver. You see it's got a T after it, which means we need to select a data value. As we're using colors, we'll go ahead and select color down at the bottom here. And that's created. Down at the bottom here, you'll see that it needs a path. That path again requires the definition owner ID at the front, followed by a period, followed by the name or path of the variable here. So again, here it's u dash probable prime dot testing dot color. We'll put that in here. You'll see that immediately that this is linked to cloud appears, and that means that it is um, successfully reading and linking to that um, that value there. You'll also see that there's a fallback value. The fallback value um, will be the default value that is shown if um, the cloud variable system cannot find a value for that particular user. What do I mean by that? And what I mean by that is that this component here is local. If I set this up as a, um, a driver, let's do that now. So we need to specify the target here. So to jump around a little bit, it's easier to explain once we're going. We're gonna go ahead and grab tint color and we drop it into the target property here. And now you'll see it's changed to that um, sort of deep maroon red color. This is local, as I was saying, which means that if another user came in here and they had a different value for u dash probable prime dot testing dot color, if you remember my fruit image I keep waving around, if they had a different value in my cloud variable, um, then they would see a different color for this material, which is quite interesting. When I was learning cloud variables a few nights ago, I had this being happening with a uh, light and the light was on or off, depending on who had set the light on or off using a pretty similar logics to that, but with a Boolean. Colors are just more visual, so I'm doing that for, to, for today's series. 
To illustrate the synchronization that occurs, let's go ahead and find here um, a different color. So what I'm going to do here is hit that 0 0.5, chuck it in the blue, hit pulse, and then you see it updated. It did take a little bit, but it did update without me doing anything. This is super powerful. Just to show you how powerful it is, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new world. So if I go to the Create New World menu, let me turn on my private UI just for a moment here. Private UI. I'm going to go ahead and create a new world here. My dash is a little messed up with this mirror. I need to uh, change it, but I've just been dealing with it. So we're going to create a new space world to private. I'm going to hit Start Session. So now I'm in a different world, and this world is completely disassociated from that first world. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to set that thing up again. Let me go ahead and uh, turn off private UI, and I'll do it. Actually, I could just go grab one, but I did want to show this sort of disconnected state, so I'm going to set up again real quick. So we're going to go to Create New, Materials, Unlit, Unlit. So bear in mind, you know, nothing's coming from the other world. And I'm going to go ahead and select this Unlit material, scroll to the bottom here, Attach Component, Cloud, Variables, Cloud, Value, Variable Driver, scroll to the bottom, color, put in the tough here, u dash probable home, dot testing, dot color, I spelled testing wrong, which is why I didn't link. There we go, now it's linked up, and now it wants to target, so I'm going to go ahead and target the same color value, so tint color, drop it in. You'll see that goes to that purple color. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the tutorial world I was in. And so here we are back in this world, and I'm going to use this logic setup. And let's go ahead and drop 0 0.5 in here. So I'm going to hit pulse. This one will change to that gray color. Let's go ahead and switch back to that new world I just made. And you'll see it's the gray color. And those didn't communicate via logics. They didn't technically communicate via components. Um, the variable was stored in the cloud and synced down using those components, though. So that's the power of those. If I had a color set up in any world, like I could take this, save it to my inventory, and then spawn it out. And wherever I put it, it would be the value of that variable. Let's go ahead and head back to the tutorial world now. And we'll continue our uh, lessons with uh, just this world. I did want to show that cross-world linking because it's very powerful. So that is the cloud value variable driver component. Again, there'll be uh, chapters in the video uh, uh, description, which will help you skip around a little bit. So let's now do some other things. I'll leave this to the side, but we'll be doing the rest on sort of just cubes because they're, they're just components and they'll show you the values. Uh, I did want to do them cubes so I can sort of pull them around, etc. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. So I'm going to, for that, I'm going to go ahead and go create new 3D model box, shrink the box down a little bit and go ahead and inspect it. For this next one, we're going to be looking at uh, another new component here. So go to cloud, variables, and we'll look at cloud value variable t. And this one again, we'll select color because it's a color that we're playing around with. And for this one, we again need to specify the path. So we'll grab the path here. But we also need to specify a variable owner ID. Do bear in mind that again, there won't be the ability for people to read this if they don't have the permission to. So do specify um, alternative pathing here if they can't read it. I think this one does sync though, um, so provided someone is in the world that uh, can read it, they'll, they should be able to see it. Let's go put this in here. You'll see that they're linked, and you'll see that the value here is gray. Uh, if I go ahead and change this, we'll drop the uh, gray off the middle. And it's back to purple. You'll see that this is now changed to purple. So you could then use this in logics, you could use it with a value copy, you could use it with any other component. There is another property though, which is part of cloud value variable, which is the change handling here. So if I change this to from ignore to write if owner, and then I change it here. So I'm gonna go ahead, specify blue. You see it's changed here already. And again, if I switch back to the other world, it's changed here too. It's somewhat magical. Um, so we can go back to my tutorial world again. Write if owner means that if I change it, as in the owner of the variable changes it, it will write across. There's also always write, but that does uh, keep into account the uh, permissions that occur there. So that is cloud value variable. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So create new, uh, we'll do a cube again. That, by the way, is very similar to dynamic value variable, which is another component in the dynamic variable system. That is uh, linked in the video description. So we'll go to attach component, cloud, 
variables. And now we're going to take a look at cloud value field. Cloud value field is again very similar to dynamic field, which occurs in the dynamic variable system. So we'll scroll down to the bottom, hit cloud value field. And again, we'll need the path, which I'll just grab from over there. And we'll need the user ID, which is me. But this time it's specifying a target. And that target is the where the value for the cloud value field should be stored. So in this case, we're just going to use a value field from the component list, but you could use um, another component, um, that material again, but then uh, you're effectively doing the same thing as the, the driver, but it's up to you. So we'll go to attach component, data, value field, scroll down to the bottom here, value field color. And I'm going to drag the value into the target here, and you'll see it lines up to that sort of blue color that we had before. This again has change handling, so we'll go ahead and scroll this to right if owner, and again here I can change this value field. Go up to green, that's changed, that's changed. Cloud value variable here has changed, and hopping to our new world, it's changed here as well. So there you go, that is the uh, cloud value field. We've got two more to go. Let's go ahead and take a look. For these ones, I am going to um, use a material orb again. I'm actually just going to go ahead and steal this one because it's important that I show you how it works. So we'll go ahead and open up this material orb and then go down to the bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and remove cloud value variable driver. And I'm going to go ahead and add attach component, cloud variables, active user cloud uh, field. First. And we'll go down to color, put the path in. We'll set a fallback value to black, actually black with all, all transparency set up, so black. And then we need to do the target, and the target that we need to set is the uh, value at the top of the material. So I'll open up a second window here and drop in tint color. And now you'll see that this material is black, and that's because it's using the active user. Actually, just accidentally grabbed it there to move it for you, so you could see it was black, and you see it would flash to uh, green there. So this one's using um, the value variable um, driver, and this one's using active user. And what that means is, instead of having a um, value owner ID at the bottom there, like this one, actually one of these cubes does. So instead of having that variable owner ID, it specifies the variable owner ID by the person who's the active user of it. Active users in Neos means the people which are uh, holding the item or um, that it's parented to them. So if I say parented this um, sphere to my hand, the active user of it would be me. Same thing goes with tools or, or anything that you're grabbing. Um, if you are parented to it in some way, sorry, all the way around, if it's parented to you in some way, then you are the active user. So you'll see here, if I grab this, it turns green, and if I let go, it turns black, and that's going back to that fallback value. You'll also see that is linked to cloud will turn off when I let go of it and turn on when I grab it, and that means that when I let go, there's no valid um, value owner ID, so it goes back to that fallback value. If I go ahead and I'm not sure this should work, there we go. Yep, I've put it on my tool shelf. You'll see it says green, and that's because my tool shelves are parented to me. I can go ahead and take it off the tool shelf, and it's back to black. That will work in other worlds. I won't hop around though, because uh, it's the same thing in another world. If I'm holding it, it'll be green. If I let go of it, it will be black. If I go ahead and change this value, you see that that updates to blue, but this is still black. But then if I grab it, it turns to blue. So there you go. That is the active uh, user cloud field. We'll do one more. We can actually do it on this ball here, because it's very similar. Uh, cloud variables, active user cloud value variable t. That's why I left it to last because tongue twisters are fun. Um, we'll go down to color here. And then here we'll need the path. So we'll go ahead and grab the path. We'll set the fullback value to black again. And then what you'll see here is instead of driving it or driving it up to that material orb, instead here um, it will just specify the value here in the component. So you see it goes to blue here and then when I let go it goes back to black but just here on the component. And there you go. With the uh, field type, I forgot to mention this, if I go ahead and parent it, and then I change it, so I'm going to scroll up to the top here, and I change that, you'll see that it changes because it's parented to me, and we're using the field type, it means that I can change it. 
and if I change the value down here, because I'm parented, uh, it's parented to me, I can again change it. But the moment I let go of it, if I change this, it doesn't change that other ball there. So there you go. That is the uh, <laughs> cloud variable components. I hope you uh, uh, hope you learned something and that that was helpful. Um, I do understand that that was a lot to go through. So if you have any questions, do let me know. I will be continuing the um, video series on cloud variables a little bit later. I'm going to take a break now because I've done four parts to just today. I'll be publishing them over this week, though. Um, and we'll follow up with some sort of examples on how you might use them out in the world. So something you might use them for um, you know, within Neos rather than just sort of theory and, and the components. Like I said, links in the video description to various items and, and memorabilia for you to collect around and take a look at. And I will see you next time for more tutorials and more cloud variable content. Catch you next time.